give us a little fill to teach him how much it is a fill thing. We only practiced it like four times yesterday, three times or something. And it wasn't about practice anyway because it was so much fill this one. An air is something they use in, um, say, hospice situations. It's a good, it's derived from the Celtic A I R E. When you don't want the heart rate to increase, you want it to relax and slow. And uh, so we're going to go on with this. She's going to read a poem she wrote about how you write in the air. And then we will play her air, Lament for Robert Wilson. Nelson, excuse me, that she lost two weeks ago. Great. So it's called the Errors of Our Ways. Wait, we need to put a mic on. Can you sit there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. So this is going to the internet. So it's not going to help you for the folks in the room in terms of your projection. If you want that, we have a microphone here. Okay. Would you like that? No. Okay. 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 So the heirs of our ways. How do you compose an air, Isabel Preston? Just sing a note was the teacher's suggestion. The pianos in front of you just match the sound. There's 88 of them, so there's plenty around. Now sing another note, just go ahead. And if you don't like it, try another instead. Up and down the keyboard, Isabel went, composing an air till her patience was spent. Now came the hard part to put it on paper. Eighth notes and quarter notes could no longer escape her. She wasn't an impasse, there's no doubt about it. For from piano to dulcimer, there's no way around it. Or maybe there is, Isabel thought. I could just use the dulcimer and apply what was taught. So she sat down at the piano bench, dulcimer in hand, and out came an air. It was really quite grand. From major to minor, the melody flowed. This isn't so hard, Isabel crowed. I might do this more often, she finally said, and not use the piano, but my dulcimer instead. Um, this composing is all about poetry, and it's all about art, it's all about having your heart in your hand, it's all the same thing, singing, playing, it's all about feel.
in class that can handle. <clears throat> when we compose, we're kind of on an island. It's not that I can put a horse figure there and say, carve like me and emulate me. I told them not to do that, whatever happened. Be yourself, let that come through, and I'll just try to guide you. And what it ends up is that I feel like a midwife and I'm running it to their different rooms and they're birthing these things with great angst and pain and joy and all of the above. And these pieces are in their infancy today. They just are half written, they're half evolved. And maybe they were already out in the ether and just waiting for someone with the proper soul to accept them and have a purpose for them that they got to have it. And the piece that Mark played on his dulcimer, the dulcimer teacher here this week, Morning Song Wednesday, um, when Mary was young, is that the two? I, I barely remember the title, but I will never forget the tune. It touched me so deeply. And it was an original of his. And I felt I knew the man better. And we give of ourselves when we write originally. We bleed. Hey, my blood, I can make more. Is what it is. It's also for our gratification. But if it can heal, if it can enlighten, if it can educate, if it can reach someone who can't be reached otherwise, then we're trying to compose it all the time. We're trying to write that. <coughs> as long as I'm sitting here, Barbara is also an, an exceptional potter. She has worked in the High Museum of Art, um, a jeweler, and she has built a dulcimer with her jewelry embedded in it. So she's quite a talented woman, and uh, she has a little bit of a hard nut to crack. She's a little shy and guarded, and she almost didn't come in the class. That scared her, it was intimidating. And that's what I want to get across today. Um, even though it has some advanced theory ideas, if you want them, half my people could not read music, the other half could. So I can work with all of that and be all of that. And there's a fellow called David Kainer. Anybody know that name? He was very instrumental in, he was a caller, a composer. He's written hundreds of dance tunes, waltzes, shottishes, uh, he was of Scandinavian origin and lived in the Northeast. And he would come, he, that Portland area where the, all those guys play contra all the time. And um, he would come for Dance Musicians Week. He affected many of us for, I don't know, close to 20 years. And he was responsible for me kind of getting off the written page because I was fiddling in his class and I kept looking at the music and it wasn't helping the expression. He said, well, just follow me through the woods. And he went out like little Pied Piper, you know, and, and I followed him around and freed up, and there it was. It was a field thing after all, and kind of a listen thing. And um, then he developed Lou Gehrig's disease. And he, he, uh, he spent, gosh, I don't know, four or five years with it before he passed. And I was thinking during that time, Oh, I wonder when he'll come back next. I want to see him again. I want to do something for him. Um, and so finally, he couldn't speak. And he had a little instrument that he could write on, and still he came and taught with that right at the end of his life. Well, in the meantime, I had written a song for him. And I'd gone and printed it off about 100 times. And at Dance Musicians Week, there are lots of people here, and we all knew about this. And they learned it. They went back and had some B minors in it, of course, and everything. And they learned the music. And what happened was, one of the evenings during the dance, 
He had his fiddle in the center of the dance floor, and he had a piece of the music playing it. And I was singing it, and there were a bunch of fiddlers and guitarists and banjo people and everything in the center playing it, and the waltz was going on around the edge, and everyone was waltzing in a circle. And he was present for that. And then the, the Presley twins and a few more of us got in the garden over by the Davidson Hall and did a video for the folks, to, for David Kainer. But it's on the folk school. I'm sure if you go back through, you can find it. And you can find my morning songs back there too. Because this is about my students today. It's not about my work. But, um, and so I wrote this song for him and I just want to sing it real quick and then we're gonna do some more about my students and how you go about composing. <clears throat> oh, and there's an echo part, and it's called the echoes. And so I'll, I'll tell you right now where the echoes come in and I'll sort of teach you. Um, Stay right where you are, draw light from your star, and the echoes will travel to First time's a little louder than the last time. And at the end, we don't know how many times before it stops. Okay? I hope you. <clears throat> and I, I made this song uh, to where it would mean something to him. I, it was really cold and I built a fire in the Davidson Music Hall before he got there because he was getting cold. And he walked in and just stood there and said, hey, I would have done that for you if I'd gotten up early enough. I said, okay, you know, let's get warm. So that's the opening of the song about that. And I included weaving in it, and I included composing in it, and all the things that the folk school is about. <clears throat> would you walk me home if the snow was deep? Build me a fire and a jerky and sing from your heart till I fell asleep. I do the same for you. Mm -hmm. Stay right where you are, drawing light from your Store, and the echoes will travel to you, and the echoes will travel to you. Won't you feel a smile when you think? still a while with the memories and play from your heart what I need to believe I do the same for you mm -hmm. stay right where you are drawing light from your star Mm -hmm. Stay right. 
The Shonos method of singing um, that comes from the Irish without instruments. And I, we had a Scottish folk teacher here, song teacher, Alan Carr, who just sat there and sang to us all the time. He barely picked up his guitar and we believed him. And so I thought, I'm going to work on that. It just takes, it takes a confidence that what you put out will be a wave that comes back to you, a positive one, an accepting one, an understanding one, and a healing one. And it works most of the time. It's amazing. Sometimes an instrument can get in the way. Or sometimes just the music is enough. Like when Mary was young, it needed no words. They were all said, and, and then some, because the man has feeling. Now, back to composing. How about Mr. Roy? Roy uh, is from a bluegrass background. He's a, he's a backup guitarist. So all he knew was this is hard rhythm. So I have his hand because slow down wasn't meaning anything to him. Soften up did not get through. I took his hand on the guitar. And I put my other hand on his shoulder and we got a little um, communication going on. What I meant, you can tell people things, but you have to show them. It's such a field thing, you have to show them. So this is his song, and if he wants to say anything about it, make it a little brief, we're rolling down on time. Hi everybody, I'm Lord Baxter. Uh, I met down here when I was about 18, and. Uh, acquainted with her and uh, so she was given a songwriter course and I thought well I could probably use that and but I probably could I probably still can use more of it but uh, <laughs> she has uh, she has kind of given me a new way to think about the way I do things so like I said I'm a really good guitar player I like to play behind everybody and not in front of them but uh, she is she kind of gave me a way to uh, she's changed my whole recording because I mean I'm a a three chord prior type of guy, and she showed me a few that I could use other chords. So uh, I've been working on this one. Uh, we'll see how it goes, and uh, it's still work in progress. When the night is deadly quiet and the air is standing still, I was out here on the road, never know. At the close of the day, looking back to where I've been, here I am, alone again, alone in the darkness, which has become my friend. 
first went down about a couple of CDs, and uh, as I listened to them, that really inspired me to really do a class with her because uh, uh, to me she she is so talented and out there and above a lot of a lot of people that I'm around, you know. Uh, no, so, uh, not above, just different. She well, she's different from where I come from, so she really inspired me. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. I have that CD sitting down here. They're ten dollars. I just have a few. There's one Celtic one, the samplers, and I only wrote two on that one. But it's, if you want to play with Irish music, it's piano. And the other one is documentary style piano that I wrote for films. They got into some films like Saving Georgia's Hemlocks and the Yellowstone Ecosystem and and a woman doing gene genealogy documentaries in Australia. It just kind of accidentally went sort of around and came back to me. Um, so now I'm gonna get it. And David is gonna do a waltz, and he had never done a waltz, and he didn't know what a waltz felt like, and so I asked him to dance with me in the classroom until I could tell it was in his body, and, he, he could hit. and again, you know, this is all a field thing, so he's got it now, but he has a kicky, guitar going on and so it's it's not a tender waltz but it's a powerful waltz. I want to thank Dawn for uh, allowing me to open up in her class and uh, having a good environment for uh, for creativity. Let's see. I failed you again, it's probably when I told you I was right. How would I know if you didn't say so when it's all about you? to compose and put notes to his music. But he hadn't played the piano in like 40 years, and so he wrote the notes over each word, like he'd go A, B, C, and then I took that, so I know a new way of composing now, I took that and made notes I could read, and I'm gonna play it, hopefully the way he likes it, um, and I'm, I'm, on, I'm on hallowed ground now. And um, <clears throat> this is called Thunder in My Head. And it has four verses that are really meaningful and personal. And I said, I can't sing those. And he said, why? And I said, they're yours. And I will not do them justice. So I'm just gonna sing the hook, which is Thunder in My Head part, maybe, if I think about it. And it looks, um, oh. If I had the right piece of my fingers. 
being hurt is not helping me. I'm bringing you down here too. It started out with these little notes written, written above here, and then I kind of make things with arrows and scratch outs and all that. And rather than make it look neat where I wouldn't read it as well, because the process went on here, I just left it as is. That's how we print it off. Whatever works. So here's thunder in my head. Gene holds his cards, and you can't tell if he really knows or doesn't, or if he's a plant in there to see if you really know how to write music, because he kind of goes, I'll say, do you like that? He goes, mm-hmm, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I got you. And he starts with the chorus instead of the verse. He does everything backwards. And it works really well. Have a great day. Enjoy your breakfast.